Hi, I'm Chef AJ and welcome to Sweet Indulgence where I show you how to make healthy, delicious, and guilt-free treats sweetened naturally with fruit. For many years, I was the executive pastry chef at Sante Restaurant in Los Angeles where I was known for my vegan and gluten-free desserts made from fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the fruit. I've loved desserts as long as I can remember. I got an Easy Bake Oven when I was seven and I haven't stopped making desserts since. The thing is, these desserts, they didn't love me back because up until about 10 years ago, I was 70 pounds more than I am now, even though I had been vegan for over 46 years. I'm gonna show you how you can make delicious desserts that will tickle your taste buds without expanding your waistline. You know, I was completely addicted to sugar, but I didn't want to completely have to desert dessert. So I learned that I could make anything taste good using fruit, nature's candy. For example, dates, which are a whole food that contain things like water and fiber, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants, and micronutrients. You know, there's not really anything good I can say about sugar, but fruit is amazing. And you'll be surprised how these desserts look and taste like all the desserts that you're familiar with. Your family and friends will love them. I promise you. And they're pretty easy to make as well. You know, according to the USDA, many Americans consume over 150 pounds of sugar per person per year. And I haven't eaten any in over 20 years. So, there's probably somebody out there that's eating my share. Well, I'm going to show you that you don't have to desert dessert and you can have a delicious dessert. You know, you notice that dessert is the last course usually because we always save the best for last. And today I'm going to show you some of my favorite desserts that are really easy to make with familiar ingredients that you probably already have in your pantry. We're going to start with one of my favorites, a rustic fruit tart followed by the peanut butter paradise parfait. It's a layered dessert. It's so pretty. And we're going to end with a decadent and sinful strawberry chocolate cheesecake. Let's get cooking. Now I'm going to show you how to make one of my very favorite desserts, the rustic fruit tart. It is so healthy because it's basically made from fruit and oats. You could even eat it for breakfast and sometimes I do. So I'm going to start with making the filling. You can really use any fruit. I like berries the best, but I'm using strawberries just because they're beautiful and they happen to be my favorite fruit. So here I have some beautiful strawberries that I've washed and cut the stems off of. And now I'm going to cut them. I'm not a fancy chef with like perfect nice techniques. You don't have to be one either. I like things to be a little bit more irregular. I don't like when things are perfect like French pastries. Not that French pastries aren't beautiful and delicious but I'm just kind of doing a rough chop. You know, you could probably chop these in a food processor or using some other tool, but I just chop them, you know, kind of evenly at the same size. You know, you could use frozen strawberries, but here's the thing. I find that frozen fruit, while healthy and convenient, often isn't as sweet as fresh fruit, but in a pinch you could. I've made this tart using just strawberries, using a trio of berries like strawberries, blackberries, raspberries. I've made it using pears, apples. I've done it with peaches. It really is up to you. You can even do a combination. I mean, once all I had was canned unsweetened pineapple and I used that. I want to tell you a little story about how this dessert was created because it's kind of funny. So I moved from Southern California to Northern California a few years ago. And when I left, I had a going away party a farewell party and it was open house from 12 to five. I made a lot of food, invited all my friends. And since we were moving in a day or two after that, I sent all the food home with the guests. Well, there were a couple of guests coming from Los Angeles that got lost and they literally showed up at 10 minutes to five and all the food was gone. But I was able to make this dessert really in no time because actually my strawberries were already sliced and that's probably the longest part of this dessert and they loved it. You can make this completely uncooked. We're gonna cook the little tart shell for probably about five minutes, but when you're in a hurry, you don't even have to cook it. You can do it just then. 
I find that if you do cook it for about five minutes though, it keeps better. And what I like to do is batch cook these. So what I mean is the filling I can make at the last minute, but the tart, I'll make several of them in advance and keep them in an airtight container. And then anytime I want a quick dessert or company comes unexpectedly, or in this case for the party, they come late, I can have a delicious dessert. And really the filling is just your fruit of your choice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna macerate these berries. Now, the word macerate literally means to soften with a liquid. Sometimes you go to a restaurant and you'll see a dessert like a, a sundae, it'll say with macerated berries. And people just assume it has sugar because often they do macerate fruit in a simple syrup, a liquid with sugar in it. But macerate literally means just to soften. I can soften these to get kind of a gooey little sauce going, really, with any liquid. I, I could use water if I wanted to, and truthfully, if you cut your fruit in advance and let it sit, it sort of macerates itself. So you can macerate with things like fruit juice. I would use unsweetened fruit juice, like maybe pineapple or orange juice. But what I really like to use to macerate my berries is a good quality balsamic vinegar. And my favorite brand is California Balsamic because I can use it not only in desserts for sweetness, because the sweetness comes just from the grapes, there's no added sugar, but I can also use it as straight up salad dressing since I'm someone who does not eat any oil. Balsamic vinegar is delicious. And you can use a clear one that is a white-based one, white balsamic, or you can use a dark one, but I prefer to use a fruity flavor and I'll switch it up. So today I'm gonna use simply lemon, but I've used peach, I've used coconut, I've used orange, I've used fig, I've used pineapple. So it's really fun because then I can just get a different flavor every time. You know, there are tools where you can cut strawberries very quickly, and I thought I had one, but I didn't. But you know, it's very, for me at least, meditative doing chopping and you know having my hand involved with it rather than using a machine. But believe it or not, I used to teach healthy vegan cooking to the blind at the Braille Institute. And I learned that a lot of the tools that make it easier for blind people to cook also make it easier for sighted people. So you're gonna see the difference between how berries look before they're macerated because I have some right here that I macerated a few hours ago. So you can see it's almost like they get a cooked texture or a texture like they would have if they'd been frozen. But the main thing is by macerating them, they just get very, very soft, and that's what we're looking for. I will put in probably a tablespoon or two of the California balsamic vinegar. I really don't measure, you can, but usually I just eyeball it. Any fruit that's in season will work. When a fruit is hard though, like an apple, you want, want to cut it very small because it's not gonna macerate the same way as a berry is. It's not gonna give up the juice or the liquid when there's not much juice or liquid in it. Oh, mango was another fruit I've used in here. Really, really delicious. You can see the difference between what berries look like when they've been macerated and when they've just been cut. And again, you don't have to macerate them long, you know, maybe an hour or two. I love these little squeeze bottles because you can get them through TSA. And I just kind of cover it like that. I don't know, that was maybe two tablespoons. And then in an hour or so, this will look like this, and I'm gonna show you how to make the crust. So now I'm gonna show you how to make this really easy pie crust, which is basically two ingredients, dates and oats, and a couple of seasonings. You know, when you think about a traditional pie crust, it's pretty unhealthy. It's usually made out of butter, shortening, sometimes both, white flour, sugar, salt. These are actual whole foods that you can eat, and it's super easy to make. You can either make it in a large tart pan. I like to get the kind with the removable bottom. They're really easy to get the tart out of. I did make this one in advance, and it's pretty easy because it comes out. You could eat this whole thing. This would be one serving for me. Just kidding. But I really like to make individual desserts. I think people like having their own. So I like to make these small little ones because I think people enjoy them that way. I love these so much that I batch prep them and I always have them in an airtight container for a quick dessert. I'm going to be baking them for just five minutes just to take the stickiness of the dates off them, but you actually don't have to. 
and I cook them on a nonstick silicone baking sheet. If you don't have one, you could just take any kind of cookie sheet and a piece of parchment paper. And I've already got my oven preheated to 325 degrees. You want to make sure not to overcook these or they will get really, really hard. So the base of these is almost like a snickerdoodle cookie, which is a recipe I have that hopefully I can show you on a future episode, but it's very simple. I'm going to be using a food processor. I always tell people when they say, Chef AJ, what type of this or that should I get? My answer is always the same. Get the biggest and the best you can afford because you can do a smaller recipe in a larger piece of equipment, but you can't do a large one in a small. So I got the biggest one I could find and I'm going to take my rolled oats. These are gluten-free rolled oats and place them in a food processor. You want it to be dry because if you had just washed it and it's wet, anything you grind like a, a grain, like an oat or a nut or a seed, you know, will turn into a pesto. We're trying to get kind of a breadcrumb or a flour-like consistency. I don't like to grind it super fine because if I did, I would just use oat flour. I like when it has a little bit of texture and toothsomeness. And then I'm going to add my spices. I love the spices from Local Spicery and I'm using their Saigon cassia cinnamon. It's different than regular cinnamon. I don't know how it's different, but it tastes like it has sugar in it, but it doesn't. And it's particularly delicious in desserts. And I'm using their vanilla bean powder. You know, vanilla is the second most expensive spice in the world. And once you try the whole vanilla bean, getting it in powder is much more economical than actually using a vanilla bean. If you can do that, that's great. You'll never go back to extracts. Extracts, you know, often have sugar. They call it glycerin, but it's still sugar or they have alcohol. So get the real vanilla bean powder if you can. I'm going to add my spices. I mean, cinnamon and vanilla. What could be better? And I'm just going to quickly pulse again. And then I'm going to add my pitted dates. So I'm using Deglet Nord dates because they are the most economical and I can find them at big box stores, organic at very good prices. They say they're pitted, but they often aren't. And so what I recommend you do is not only squeeze each one, but cut them in half because you don't want a rogue pit in there. It can damage the blade of your food processor and it can just be an unpleasant experience. So I've got my dates. Now, all, any date would work. Medjool dates, people love them, but I find that in desserts, medjool dates are so much stickier that I have to bake them a little bit longer. So keep that in mind. If your date is sticky, you might want to bake it a little bit longer. But then again, you might not want to bake it at all. It's your recipe. You do it your way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to process this now until a ball starts to form. Now, how long this takes is going to depend on how powerful your food processor is. So what you're looking for is for it to stick together in a ball, but not crumble. So this is not quite done. So what I need to do is either add a few more dates or let it run a little bit longer. So if after running it for a few minutes, you find it's not quite there, it's still a little bit crumbly, what you're going to do is, again, I'm squeezing each one to make sure there's no pit in there, is I'm just going to add a few more dates. So if you think about it, the dates are not only the sugar in this recipe, I mean, there is natural sugar in dates, but it's mitigated by having all the fiber and essential nutrients, vitamins, phytochemicals, antioxidants. But the dates are also the glue. It's what's making it stick together. So I'm feeling around for more of the stickier ones so that we can get these to stick together. You know, in any recipe, you can always add ingredients. You can't take away. So it's always okay to just start with fewer than you think you need. It's almost there. It's almost at what I call the break point, which I'm going to show you what that is. One of the reasons I really love teaching hands-on cooking classes is so that you can feel it so you know exactly what it's supposed to feel like. So this should just be a couple more minutes now. You can kind of tell that it's ready because the food processor starts to slow down. And you can see that this is exactly what we're looking for. Another way to tell is to take just a little bit in your hand, squeeze it together. You can see that I now have a, you could eat this by the way, there's no, no reason you couldn't. But if I can break it in half like this and it doesn't crumble, I've achieved what I wanted. I call that the break point. So now what I'm going to do 
is dump this onto my silicone baking mat. And again, if you want to have it precise and be perfect, you can use these little tart pans. They come in all different sizes and make them perfect. But I like things to have a more homemade and rustic look. And what I do is I'm just going to put this together in kind of a large blob. And then I'm going to eyeball half of it. Now, if you want to be precise, you can use a food scale if you want every one precise. And then half again. You could also make this into six or even eight mini tarts, but I think four, four is a nice size. And again, this is just fruit notes. I kind of roll it into a ball, each one. And then with the palm of my hand, I'm just going to press this down into a circle. It's really fun to get the kids involved when you're making food in general, but dessert in particular. And again, if you want it to be perfect, it can but we're just looking for circles now. And then we're gonna build up the sides, I call it the lip, so that we have plenty of room for our delicious filling. You know, traditional pie crusts, I mean, I never cared for them. They don't taste very good to me, but this basically tastes like a delicious cookie. So I've served this many times and people just, they don't even want the fruit, they just wanna eat the crust. And you could fill these with anything you want, really. So as you smush it down, you kind of build a lip, and that's why if you don't enjoy this part of it, you can just get the tart pan and push it in and make it however you want. And then you kind of push the size, and again, you can take all the time you want to make it as perfect as you like, but it does need to stick together. That's why you have to wait for the break point. When I have these all done, I'm gonna pop them in a 325 degree preheated oven for about five minutes. It's important when you bake anything, especially vegan desserts, that you don't over mix too much. And I always like to let things just sit in the oven a little bit before I take it out. Just kind of let that oven cool down naturally. I mean, cinnamon and vanilla are a match made in heaven, especially when you get quality spices like the ones from local spicery, where they're made in small jars, non-irradiated, you know, it's great to save money at big box stores, but you know, buying a spices in bulk, I don't think is a great idea. It's not that they will harm you if they're expired or older, but they lose their potency. There we go. And again, you can see these aren't perfect. I don't go for perfection. I kind of like that each one's a little different. And like I said, we can just fill these like this, but they have a tiny bit of stickiness because of the date. That's why I like to cook them just for a very short time, just to get that stickiness off and just so that they'll keep for a very long time. So, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna pop these in the oven and then I'm gonna show you how to fill the ones we've already made. So I'm gonna take the crust out of the oven One of the things about being a recovering pastry chef is I almost don't even need to use gloves anymore. Now I'm going to show you how to fill them. It's so easy. We just take our macerated berries. These are the ones that were just macerated an hour ago, and you can see that they've already given up their liquid. They've been marinating in that delicious Simply Leaven from California Balsamic. And I am just going to fill each individual tart shell as full as I possibly can. You know, I just got back from teaching hands-on cooking at the world-famous Rancho La Puerta Spa in Tecate, Mexico. And the students love to make this recipe with whatever fruit they grow there that's fresh. So in this case, they had figs and apricots. It always works. When we can't find a good quality reduced California balsamic type vinegar, we just take it and reduce it ourselves simply by cooking it on the stove until it's thick and syrupy. You see, regular vinegar, like balsamic vinegar, is very sour and has about 6% acidity. But for desserts, you want one that has about 4%, like California balsamic, because then it's sweet and syrupy. And again, the sweetness in the balsamic isn't coming from sugar. It's coming just from the grapes. Look how beautiful these are. I always like to top things with a little bit of fresh mint from the garden. I don't know how I planned it so perfectly <laughs> that each one is perfectly filled. You can actually pick these up with your hand and eat them, and I will. 
So I look for the mint that is pretty. And maybe just take a little piece on top of each one. It's very, very simple desserts. I don't think desserts need to be complicated or take a long time to make to be delicious. And in this case, super healthy. Garnishing is very important because they say we eat with our eyes. Look how beautiful these tarts look. But let me show you a variation that you can make. So some of the people at Rancho La Puerta, because they're their own chefs, they're making up the recipes, even using mine as a template. We're going to take the ones that I had already macerated. And what some of the chefs like to do is to add just a little bit of cacao nibs. This is the pieces of the cocoa bean. There's no sweetener. It just adds a little bit of chocolateiness and a little bit of crunch. And then we can fill the big tart. Hopefully that was enough strawberries. Oh, look at that. And you can even chop the mint up too if you want. Probably could use a few more strawberries. Place it in the middle. And then we have the larger version. I also want to show you a variation for plating. They did this at the restaurant. There was a person that's all they did. You can make a simple, delicious strawberry sauce just out of strawberries and dates. And you can decorate your plate. And look how pretty it looks when you put it on it. Should I try it? Okay, you twisted my arm. Mm. Mm. This is delicious. I think you're really gonna like it. So now I'm gonna show you how to make the peanut butter paradise parfait. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make the chocolate crumbs. Have you ever seen those desserts like mud pie or dirt where there's crushed up chocolate wafer cookies? Well, I'm gonna make the crushed up wafer part, except instead of cookies, it's gonna be made out of really healthy whole food ingredients like nuts and fruit. So I'm gonna be using walnuts, raw unroasted walnuts because Nuts are healthy in general, but walnuts in particular, very high in what they call these omega-3 essential fatty acids. And I'm gonna take them and put them into a food processor, a dry one fitted with the S-blade. Remember, you don't want any water or moisture in there when you're grinding up grains or nuts or seeds because you'll get a pesto instead of like a crumb-like bread crumb or flour-like consistency, which is what we're going for. So I'm just gonna process these into crumbs. You don't want to process it too long or you'll actually get nut butter with a powerful food processor like this. And then I'm going to add my cocoa powder. And again, for whatever reason you can't have chocolate, you can use carob powder, raw or roasted. And then I'm going to take my pitted dates that I cut in half to make sure that I don't accidentally get a pit. I am using the Deglet Nord dates. I like the Bari dates if I'm gonna eat a date for a snack, but for these recipes in general, I like the Deglet Noir because they're a little bit drier. The Medjool dates are wonderful, but they're so sticky that I can't get a crumbly texture when I'm doing this. I'm gonna put those in the food processor. Now, I'm gonna pulse this because if I were to let this go and just go round and round, I would have another recipe that I'm gonna show you in another episode. It's a brownie. It's like a brownie that's raw but I don't want it to stick together. I want it to be crumbs. So I'm just gonna process it till the dates are pulverized, but not so that it's all smushed together. Perfect. Now, I keep this on hand at all times because if I wanna make a quick dessert, I can sprinkle this even over fresh fruit. I can use this on what I call nice cream, which is non-dairy ice cream made from fruit, like banana and ice cream. So I just keep it on hand in an airtight container, and then I can just pour the rest of the crumbs in here. And now I'm gonna show you how to make the peanut butter mousse that this is going to be layered with. Now I'm gonna show you how to make the filling for the peanut butter paradise parfait. And this is 
a recipe on its own. It's peanut butter mousse, and it's actually one of my husband's very favorite recipes. So we're gonna start with peanut butter. Now, you can buy pretty healthy peanut butter in the store these days made from just peanuts, but I find when you buy commercial peanut butter, it's often very hard, especially if you refrigerate it. I mean, some stores have that little machine where you can grind it yourself, which is great, but I make my own peanut butter easily in two minutes, and I hope to be able to show you how to do that in another episode. What I like about making it myself is it doesn't get hard and so then it creams up really easily. So I'm going to take my peanut butter, which is literally nothing but roasted unsalted peanuts, place it in the food processor, fit it with the S blade, add my date syrup. I love to use the organic date syrup from I Love Date Lady. It's rich in minerals, it's organic, and it's delicious. I'm going to add my date syrup. I used to make my own, but it's pretty labor intensive, so now I just buy it. In bulk, I might add. You know, this only has four ingredients, five if you choose to use the vanilla powder. I've got my non-dairy cream cheese. At least where I live in California, it's available at all stores. They don't even have to be the natural food stores anymore because a lot of people are lactose intolerant or are avoiding dairy for whatever reason. But it is pretty easy to make your own cream cheese just out of cashews overnight. Hope to show you how to do that as well. And my tofu. This is the extra firm silken tofu, different than the water pack tofu. This is what I use for desserts. It comes in a little box. Sometimes it's in the refrigerator section. Sometimes it's not. It depends on the store. And a little bit of vanilla bean powder from local spicery. It just takes it to the next level. It's just, it's my favorite spice. What can I tell you? So now I'm gonna process it in the food processor until it's smooth and creamy. It's often a good idea to stop it at the beginning and just scrape down the sides just to make sure that everything gets fully incorporated and smooth. There's nothing like the smell of fresh peanut butter. You know, the, the jarred and the you know other peanut butter that you can get. I don't know, it just, it just doesn't taste as good to me. And it's actually so much more economical to make your own. That's it. Smooth, creamy, delicious. This will set up a little bit in the refrigerator, but let me show you how I plate or put together the peanut butter paradise parfaits. So now I'm gonna show you the best part. Well, the best part is actually the eating, but the second best part, how to assemble your beautiful, delicious peanut butter paradise parfait. Now I like to look for little individual beautiful serving glasses because I think people like having their own dessert. I know I don't like to share. I actually found these at the dollar store. But when I'm making this for a large group because I have a healthy meetup group where I live and we get together every month for a potluck, I make a double or a triple recipe and I do the same thing I'm gonna show you in a beautiful trifle bowl. It's a, just a beautiful presentation and it's easier than plating, you know, 30 or 40 servings. So we have our delicious peanut butter mousse that we've already made. And we have our chocolate crumbs that we've made. And I also make these cinnamon vanilla streusel crumbs because my husband can't have chocolate and I want him to be able to enjoy this dessert. The only other ingredient you'll need are fresh bananas. And when I'm doing this, I want to make sure that the bananas aren't overripe because then they get a little bit mushy. And since the rest of the dessert is very sweet, it's okay if the banana isn't perfectly right and has a little bit of green on it. I have this really cool tool. I don't know where I got it. I actually think it was in Big Bear on vacation once that cuts the banana into perfect pieces exactly the same size. But you can cut them as big or as small as you want. Sometimes I actually cut them lengthwise when I'm doing the trifle for just a presentation so that you can really see the banana. So I'm just going to make these into slices. Isn't that cool? Very easy. If there's a tool, I'm going to get it. I don't have the best knife skills of, of a chef. So I love tools, cool tools. There we go. I'm just going to do one right now. I can always do another. Then I'm going to take a scoop and I'm going to place, actually no, I decided I'm going to put a layer of the crumbs first. I'm going to make one chocolate and one vanilla. So I'm just gonna just put a few crumbs on the bottom. 
You can mix and match. You could do one chocolate layer, one vanilla. I'm gonna do them the same, put a few crumbs on the bottom. Then I'm going to take my mousse. And again, this can be a standalone recipe. You don't have to go to the trouble of making a parfait, but if you do, I'm sure it will be appreciated. Yeah, probably a little bit shorter of a glass might have been a little bit better because this would be a huge amount of dessert if I was going to make <laughs> the whole thing. So I'm just going to kind of shake it around a little bit. Then I'm going to just take a few slices of my banana on top and you can put them in this way. Sometimes I put them in so that they show up off the side. Got a little bit of mousse there. I'll use my banana peel as a napkin. How do you like that? So then you can decide if you want to do a few more crumbs. It's really up to you. Get the kids involved. Have them customize it. People love customizing their desserts. That really probably is enough for a serving, but these are extra large glasses, so we will double it up. Another two scoops. This is the mousse part is very, very rich. I call this peanut butter paradise parfait because, well, eating it, it's paradise. And the word parfait simply means perfect. So more banana. Take another banana from this one. I could cut another one, but this will be fine. And then maybe a few more crumbs, just so you get a little bit of crumb in every bite. And then what I like to do is take a little bit of chopped roasted peanuts and sprinkle it over the top. You can see from the side how beautiful it is. Maybe the chocolate one's a little bit prettier because of the color, but this one will be every bit as good. You don't believe me? Well, then I guess I'll have to take one for the team and taste it. I want to get a little bit of everything in it, the crumb, the banana, the mousse, to your health. That is absolutely delicious. I hope you'll try it. So now I'm gonna show you how to make a decadent strawberry chocolate cheesecake, the pièce de résistance. Sorry, my French isn't great. Although I was raised by a French aunt, believe it or not. We're gonna start with the pan. So for cheesecakes, I like to use spring form pans and they come in many different shapes and sizes. I have large ones that are rectangular. I have heart shaped ones. They come with glass and silicone rings, but you can get these fairly inexpensively at a restaurant supply store or online. So a cheesecake pan has sides and they are removable like this. Now, I like to take a piece of parchment paper because then it makes cleanup even easier by placing it on the bottom ring and then placing the ring on top of it. And then you'll have that one little ring to clean, but you don't have to do that. So we're gonna put our pan aside for now and we're gonna make the crust. Again, the crust is so easy. It's basically made out of two or three ingredients if you choose to use the vanilla bean powder. So we have here our almond flour. Now, almond flour, at least where I live, is readily available even in regular grocery stores, not even necessarily health food stores. If you can't find it, that's okay. Just take almonds and then process them in your food processor till they become very fine. There's also something known as almond meal that you can find. It will work great. If for some reason you can't have almonds, you could substitute another nut, for example, or even a seed, but you wanna make sure that it's unsalted and unroasted. So we're gonna place this in the food processor fitted with the S blade, and I'm gonna add one of my favorite seasonings from local spicery, the vanilla bean powder, different than vanilla powder, which is often white and has sugar in it. This is the real deal. It's just ground up vanilla beans. And we're just going to process them together just for a quick second. Now, I like to keep the crust light in color to contrast the chocolate filling, but sometimes when I teach this class in my hands-on cooking classes at Rancho La Puerta, some of the students like to add a little bit of cocoa powder and make it chocolate all the way through. Your choice. I'm going to add my pitted dates. Remember the tip, cut them in half even if they're pitted because you never know. 
These are the Deglet Noir because as I mentioned before, they tend to be more cost effective because I use a lot of dates. But if I'm gonna eat a date just for enjoyment, and let me tell you, dates are enjoyable just as a little sweet treat at the end of the meal. I prefer the Bari dates because they taste like a caramel from my childhood. I love Date Lady who also makes the date syrup, but if you ever get a chance to go to a date festival or a farmer's market, try the Bari date. So now we're gonna process this until it starts to slow down and a ball forms. How long that takes will depend on how powerful your food processor is, but the way I know it's ready is I reach my hand in and I squeeze a little bit of it together. And when I can form a ball easily, break it in half without it crumbling, I call that the break point, I know it's ready. And you can see that these crumbs look like graham crackers. So when I grew up, all the cheesecakes that we made had a graham cracker crust, which is why I like to keep it this color instead of using the cocoa powder. It's very easy. You just press it in the pan with your hand. I'm using the heel of my hand here just to get it evenly distributed. And you know, what's great about this recipe is you don't even have to cook it. You know, many of us live in places where it's really hot. I know I used to live in the desert and I never wanted to turn my oven on. So I really appreciate being able to make easy, healthy desserts. Eating without heating is what I call it. And they're actually, I think a lot of times simpler to make and take less time. So there I have my beautiful crust. And you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's gonna have a topping. It smells really good. So now I'm gonna show you how to make the filling for our decadent and dairy-free vegan and date sweetened strawberry chocolate cheesecake. So we're gonna start again with our food processor fitted with the S blade, and then we're going to add some ingredients to it. I have my non-dairy cream cheese. You know, it's so easy now to find it even in regular supermarkets, but I can make it myself easily out of cashews, which I'd love to show you in a future episode. It's really that easy. Place that in the food processor with a box of tofu. So I'm using silken tofu. That's different than the water-packed tofu you see in the refrigerated section, which is awesome for savory recipes and stir fries. But for desserts, we wanna use the smooth silken tofu that comes in little aseptic boxes. You can use whatever variation you want, soft, firm, extra firm. If they have extra firm, get it, but honestly, they'll all work. This comes in a little block, but I just kind of smushed it into the bowl. Now, if somebody was allergic to soy, I have substituted equal parts of ripe avocado for tofu in my dessert recipes that contain chocolate. We're gonna be using a good quality cocoa powder. You can also use a cacao powder. I always say get the best that you can afford. And I like the darker ones better. I just think they're prettier. Mm, they smell great. So whichever one you like. And if you can't have chocolate, you could use carob powder. Roasted is probably a little bit better than uh, uh, raw if you're using it for dessert. So we're just going to process this just for a minute or two with the S-Blade. Actually, that was less than a minute or two because we have to add a very important ingredient, which is the melted chocolate. So I'm gonna go over to the oven and show you how I melt chocolate really, really quickly and easily. So it's perfectly okay to melt chocolate over a double boiler if you have one. And if you don't have one, you can put a pan over a pot. I do this so often. I've had to do that for so many years, especially working at a restaurant. So what I do is I melt it very carefully in a nonstick pan on the stove because I'm adding date syrup to it so it won't scorch. The thing about chocolate, when you're working with it, you can't walk away or take a phone call. Same thing if you're roasting nuts because a second or two could mean that it scorches and then you won't be able to use it. So I'm going to turn my oven on and I'm going to put it on low heat. That's important. And then I'm going to add my date syrup. I know that some people melt their chocolate in a microwave. I don't know, Timmy, that's a little bit risky. So I like to do it over the stove, over low heat. And I kind of just have to wait for it because I could do it over high heat, but then I'm going to risk it scorching. So what is date syrup? Date syrup is amazing. You know, it's been around in the Middle East for centuries because it's so hot there that when dates ripen in the sun, they actually do produce a date syrup. 
Now, because it's readily available, I use my favorite brand. It's organic. I love Date Lady. It comes in these bottles, but I prefer the half gallon myself. What I love about date syrup is it tastes like dates. It's delicious without being sickly sweet. And again, you've got the nutrients intact. I wrote a book once called Unprocessed because my feeling is, is we should be eating food that comes from a plant rather than food manufactured in a plant. And my litmus test for whether or not I will eat something is can I make it easily in my own kitchen? Even though I didn't make the tofu and the cream cheese, I know how to make that. And it's pretty easy. And it's the same with date syrup. As I said, I have been off refined sugar for over 20 years. I used to make my own date syrup. As a matter of fact, my first book had a recipe for it. It's not that hard. You take dates and you boil them with water and reduce it, and then you blend it. Some people strain it, some people don't. Oops, if it starts to bubble, it's a little too high. But now that this wonderful product, I Love Date Lady, is commercially available, I just buy it. It's easier. You can also buy date paste, which is literally just dates. If you're not familiar with dates, I hope you'll give them a try. Because if it wasn't for dates, I don't think I could ever have gotten off sugar. I was such a sugar addict from the time I was born until I was 43 years old. That's how I became obese and quite unhealthy, drinking soda all day, eating all kinds of candies, cakes, cookies, pies, and ice cream. They were vegan, but they weren't healthy. If you feel like it's bubbling too much, you can just lower the heat because again, we don't want it to burn or scorch, but when you're, when you're melting it with the date syrup, it's less likely to happen, but you still gotta pay attention to it. And again, if you use a nonstick pan, just make sure you know it's, it's one that's safe. This one I'm sure about, but you can also use stainless steel. This is just a lot easier for the cleanup. Oh, the chocolate I'm using is 100% cacao. That's it. There's no sugar in it. There's no artificial sweeteners or zero calorie sweeteners, which let's face it, at least the doctors that I work with say aren't any better for you than sugar because they're really disruptive to your gut microbiome. That's why I prefer to use just the whole fruit. You can get 100% cacao in really just regular grocery stores these days. And of course, online, there's many different brands. And by using dates and date syrup, you control the amount of sweetness in your recipe to your liking. So now I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm gonna walk back to the food processor and finish the filling. So now I'm gonna take this luscious melted chocolate and date syrup and carefully pour it into the food processor that has our already blended tofu, non-dairy cream cheese, and cocoa powder. That's beautiful. Ooh. Put it back on the stove. Now I'm going to process until it's smooth and creamy. So just about one or two minutes until it's smooth and creamy. This is a dessert to live for. It's so decadent and so, oh, so rich. And I'm just gonna place it over the crust and then I'm gonna to top it with beautiful strawberries. We've done this with blueberries and it tasted delicious. However, in my opinion, nothing is more beautiful than chocolate and strawberries. I wanna show you a really cool tip that I learned from my sister-in-law, Lauren, on how to get the blade of your food processor clean, whether you're making mousses and fillings like this or even just hummus. A lot of people leave a lot of the product behind because they don't want to take the time to clean the blade. But I'm going to show you how, using something called centrifugal force, you can get it clean for you. So what I do is I put my food processor back on the base and just very quickly pulse it. And then what happens is all the mousse has come off the blade pretty much. And there's a lot more probably a half a cup of filling in there that might have been left behind. So that's a really cool tip. Let's get every bit out. Oh, this is as good as any cheesecake from any restaurant. And I know that because I made them from a restaurant. Now you want to smooth it down. But what I like to do is use a tool called an offset spatula. These are very inexpensive and available 
a lot of craft for cake decorating stores, just because as you see, when I'm using the spatula, it's kind of hard to get it level. But when you use an offset spatula, it's really easy to smooth over the top. Doesn't this look luscious? I wish you could smell it, but really, I wish you could make it. If you do make it, I hope you'll either email me or tag me on social media with a picture. You know, I teach dessert master classes and I had a seven-year-old young boy named Luca who actually made this and have photos to prove it. So we get the top smooth and we don't have to have it perfect because we're gonna cover it with strawberries. So here are my beautiful strawberries. What I like to do is get the biggest ones I can find. Some seasons, they're not gonna be that big, but I look for the biggest ones I can find. And then what I do is I just simply cut the stem off and then I just press them down. I start usually in the middle at, for one, just to make sure I have one in the middle because I never know how many I will need. It's okay if they're not completely covered, by the way. Oh, look at this beautiful one. That's a big one that should probably go on in the middle. And then we just press them all the way around. Fruit and chocolate are simpatico, if you ask me, a match made in heaven. They just go together so well. And again, get the kids involved. Kids love dessert. Grown-ups love dessert too, but it's so fun to make it. And you know, when you get kids involved in the kitchen, they're more likely to eat healthy because they're going to be proud of it because they helped or they made it. So we're just going to put these all the way around or as much around as we have them for. It's okay if some of the chocolate goes through. You can always move it. See, you can move it. It's not a problem. And of course, depending on what size springform pan you choose, you know, the surface area will be different. It, some, some springform pans are a little bigger, some are a little bit smaller. But again, we try to get as many strawberries as we can, and that's okay. Actually, I think this is going to come out perfect because I have two more strawberries here. I was going to save one to show you how to make a strawberry fan. So what I'll do is I'll show you how to make that strawberry fan, but I'm still going to use it in here because I think I need it. When I make a strawberry fan, I look for the biggest one I can that's kind of perfect in size that has a nice stem on it. And so what you do to make a strawberry fan is you take a small knife and you make little cuts, but you don't cut all the way through, but you try to cut almost to the top of the stem, and then you just press with your thumb, and then you have a beautiful strawberry fan. This would have been perfect on our rustic fruit tart or really over any dessert, and you can place it like that. You can also make strawberry roses, but as I said, I need this to go on this dessert, so we're just gonna stick it back together and put it right there. This is pretty much set up, but it's best if you stick it in the refrigerator for a little bit of time just to make it easier to cut. I know some people have put it in the freezer, but with the strawberries on it, you probably don't want to do that because you don't want your strawberries frozen. And it's beautiful just to serve it like this. But I like to make it even more beautiful by creating a little chocolate drizzle. And I'm going to go back to the oven and show you how that's done. So now I'm gonna show you how to make an optional chocolate drizzle for the top. I'm using the same pan because all I had in it was chocolate and date syrup, and that's what I'm going to have in it right now. I have a little bit of my unsweetened 100% cacao. D did you know that cacao beans are actually a seed and they were used in the Aztec civilization for currency? People love chocolate. It's the number one most craved food in the world. I'm gonna turn on my oven bring it to a low heat, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of my date syrup to melt it. <laughs> that was the date syrup, not me. <laughs> this stuff is great over pancakes, over waffles. And so we're just going to melt this. It's gonna melt very quickly. And then using a fork, I'm just gonna drizzle it over the top of the cheesecake. If for some reason it wasn't smooth enough or creamy enough, we could add just a tiny bit of non-dairy milk, but we don't need to do that here because I can see how nicely it's melting. Beautiful. Oh. And again, feel free to do this over a double boiler. I just find it's easier for me to do this. Also, make sure you don't use metal if you're using a non-stick pan. It can actually 
mar the coating. I've had this pan for 30 years and it's perfect. Oh, look at that. So what we wanna do is work quickly. So I'm gonna now walk back over to the cheesecake and start my drizzle. So as I mentioned, I needed a little bit more, just a little, just a little milk. You don't wanna melt it in the milk because then it can actually seize up, but I wanted a little bit more. You might wanna do this in your sink if you think it's gonna be messy and you just kinda of go over the top. Oh, you don't wanna completely cover the strawberries. And again, you can use a fork. If you're doing it in the sink, you can just use a fork and kind of flick it. And again, I don't want to flick it here because <laughs> then I'd have a big mess, but sometimes I have a farmhouse sink where I can flick it and it only goes in the sink. And again, you can use all of it or some of it. I'm told that there's no such thing as too much chocolate. And I'm telling you, this will wow your company. People will not know that it's vegan gluten-free, dairy-free, refined sugar-free, meaning sweetened only with dates. Just have to work quickly because it does harden fairly quickly. It's gonna look so pretty when we take it out of the ring, but we need to let it set up just for a little bit in the refrigerator so that it'll be easily sliced. There we go. I probably always put on more than I need to, but you know what they say, right? If a little chocolate's good, a lot is better. So now I'm going to pop this into the refrigerator, let it set up a little bit, then I'm gonna take the ring off and show you what it looks like when it's done. So now, for the moment, you've all been waiting for the unveiling. We've had this in the refrigerator for about two hours. Usually I would do it probably more like four or overnight, but let's see how it looks. All you do is open the ring on the side like this, and it lifts off really easily. If you have a kid or a husband, they can just lick the side right there so that nothing is wasted. And again, what I love about using the parchment paper is look how easy I can pick it up. Actually, I'm gonna try something dangerous here. See if I can just move, oh yeah. Okay, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? The crust looks just like your traditional graham cracker crust. Pretty, oh, this weighs a ton. A beautiful white plate with gold trim. And now the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So let me find one of the beautiful strawberries. I like to cut around the strawberry rather than cut into it. It cuts very, very easily. Now this is very rich. So small pieces should be enough to satisfy even the biggest chocolate lover. The first piece is usually the most difficult to get out. Look at that. Oh, whoops, stand up straight. There you go. Look at this beautiful, dairy-free, decadent, date-sweetened, vegan and gluten-free chocolate cheesecake how it tastes. Get a little piece of the crust. I want to make sure I get a strawberry. Oh my god. This is so rich and it's not too sweet because we use the lovely date syrup and the unsweetened chocolate. I mean this is the kind of dessert you'd find in a fine restaurant which is what I used to do. I hope you'll try this and I hope you'll love it and let me know. Thank you for watching Sweet Indulgence, where I showed you how to make a rustic fruit tart, a peanut butter paradise parfait, and a sinful decadent strawberry chocolate cheesecake. I'm Chef AJ, and you can find me at my website, chefaj.com. On Instagram is the real Chef AJ, and every day on YouTube, I do a live show. I hope you'll come back for the next episode where I'm gonna show you how to make my world famous German chocolate cake. Until then, Happy eating, you don't have to dessert dessert when it's made from fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the fruit.